Hello. During a recent trip to South Africa, uh, Claire and I spent nine days at the Cougar National Park. Which, as you can see from the map on the screen, is at the northeast, extreme northeast of uh, South Africa. We flew from Atlanta to Johannesburg and then the next day flew from Johannesburg to Palaborua where we picked up a rental car and entered Kruger National Park. In Kruger we stayed at three different camps and eventually we drove out to Nelspruit from where we flew to Cape Town. We spent a day in Cape Town then we went to Bats Bay where we rented a cottage by the shore and spent three nights there. And from there we drove to Wilderness where we spent four nights in a nice hotel in a little town and we hiked in the Garden Route National Park nearby, birding in forests and wetlands. Then we drove back to Cape Town and from there flew to the U.S. via Amsterdam. We, we flew into Palaborua, which is in the, the north side of the park, but the, let's just say is that the, the southernmost entrance to the north side of the park. From there, we drove to the Letaba rest camp along the paved highway H9 through the park. The speed limit there was 50 kilometers per hour, but we averaged about 20 kilometers per hour due to the numerous animal sightings along the way. Soon after, we, we had to start driving to Letaba. We spot this male elephant foraging on by the roadside. Another, another animal that I saw was this cute small antelope, the steambok, quite common in the park. There were also lots of impala. Impalas are very common in Kruger, and the, it's estimated that there are 300,000 of them there. This is the black meat plover present at every, every reservoir stream in wetland in this huge park. an African fish eagle, the South Africa equivalent to the American bald eagle. This is a, a bird that's present at, at every reservoir and large stream in the park. Here we see some red-billed oxpeckers cleaning up an impala. They eat ticks and the other external parasites. Finally, we reached the Letaba rest camp. Here's the entrance gate to the Letaba. This is the bungalow that we rent at the camp. You can now see in the background Claire and our rental car. This is the view from the from the bungalow with a large area with a uh, a lawn that's a, bit, a little bit beaten up at this time of the year because of the drought and some benches by a walk by the river beyond the benches is the fence of the camp and then the Letaba River Letaba River there I had uh, lots of birds in it water birds such as those water ticknies There were also a pair of the very large saddle-billed storks.
this distance photo doesn't do full justice to this beautiful stork. Inside the camp, there were a few pairs of bush bucks. This uh, these bush bucks are a little bit larger than than goats, and they browse throughout the the camp. Hell with the guinea fall of house also swept through the camp every morning a very large flock. This particular flock had more than 30 individuals. Here's a close-up of this beautiful wild chicken. Here, one of the inhabitants of the bushveld around the, around the camp. I took this photo of the brown hood kingfisher in the picnic area of the Taba camp. Natal is poor fowl, also uh, relatively large birds, vaguely related to chickens. This, uh, you know, the, the size of a, a small, immature chicken, also roam the camp. This one was photographed in the picnic area. And hornbills, several species of hornbills inhabit the park. This one is the red-billed hornbill, southern red-billed hornbill, the smallest of the hornbills. Other bird in the picnic area was the white-fronted bee-eater. These birds are vaguely related to kingfishers and very colorful. The local squirrel, the African tree squirrel. And the warthog had managed to sneak into the picnic area. And there he is. He was not pleased to be photographed and run in my direction, and I jumped on the picnic table to the amusement of the park staff that were cleaning the picnic area. This is a male greater kudu, what we saw along the, the Taba River while we were driving to the Olifants West Camp. Uh, you can see in the lower left corner the Impala. The Impala is about the size, the size of a uh, of a small goat. So you can see that the kudus are really big, are big antelopes. This is a relatively large ground bird, the red crested bustard. We saw several of those. This particular one was seen on, on, the, on our drive to the Olifants West Camp. We got to Olifant's rest camp, which was very birdy and very busy with people and the renovations that day. They have a fantastic outlook on the Olifant's River. And, uh, and here's a, a view of this big river with the vast plains of the Kruger National Park behind it. Nile crocodiles, such as this big one, are present in all the rivers and the other large water bodies in the park. We start our drive without the Talamati bush camp, which was further south than Letaba, and at some point we had to cross over the Olifants River, and there is this big bridge here and the, the park regulations allow people to get off the cars in this big bridge, presumably because of the good visibility, so, if, so there is no danger of being surprised by large animals. We took a side road, leaving the main paved road shortly after we crossed the Olifants River, and we came across this, this very worried bunch of zebras. There were several of those uh, small groups of zebras in the area, probably going towards the, the water hole that can, 
that's in the back there where the green trees are. And uh, we had seen them looking in a particular direction before. We looked in that direction, saw two lionesses crossing the road. So these zebras were monitoring the, the lions, trying to avoid, to avoid become, becoming their lunch. This is a very large ground bird, another bustard, the quarry bustard. This one we surprised drinking water in the side road from, uh, along which we were driving south. Along this road we saw also blue white beasts, blue wilder beasts, such as this three in the photo. Along one of the creeks in the area, we came across this group of hippos that uh, that had their, that were accompanied by a large flock of red-billed oxpeckers. Several of the hippos took to the water, and uh, this gray heron found their, a movable rock to fish from. We arrived at the Talamat bush camp <coughs> in the afternoon of the, 4th, uh, of the 4th of September. It was a 110 kilometer ride. This is the entrance gate to, to Talamat. The gates are open from 6 in the morning to 6 in the afternoon. And there was, a, and there is a, there is a fixture on the ground there to discourage the hoof the animals from enter the camp. Here's a view of the of the cottage that we rented at this camp where we stayed for three nights. Not a view, was a nice cottage with. Uh, with one bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, internal kitchen, and a living room, plus this nice porch. We took drives around. And uh, in those drives we saw some animals, such as the savanna baboon, here. First one is a male, this is a mother carrying a baby. We also saw the, our first southern ground the hornbills, the largest of the hornbills. Tawny eagle. At the camp itself, uh, itself we saw this beautiful little shrike, the black backed puff back. Drive around, we often saw nests of white backed vultures, such as this one on the top of that tree. You can also get a feeling for the habitat in this area, for the landscape. Here, a herd of giraffes approaching a water hole. Here's a grazing African buffalo with some ox packers in it. A mother and baby elephant. Another bird in the Talamat bush camp itself, the white throat blobbing shot. Another bird yet, white browed scrub robin, also photographed in the camp itself. Another of the hornbills, the southern yellow billed hornbill. This, these birds were very endearing. They, they went around the camp. In Small, small and very noisy gangs. They are about the size of a mockingbird. It's the arrow market babbler. And we saw more southern ground hornbills, the largest uh, hornbills in the area. I took this photo from inside the camp. The, a group of seven of those magnificent birds paraded past the fence. Not a very common 
bird in the in the camp it was the greater blue eared starling. Another drive. Saw this lion resting in the shade of a bush. There was a both a male and a female lion. The female was to the left. We had saw this the zebras touching each other. Another bird that we found in a a dry creek bed, the ground scraper thrush. Now at land the area we came across this uh, Jasanam, the African Jacana. Very common seed eater throughout the area was the blue breast cordon bleu. We had we at this point we were driving towards the Lower Sabi Rest Camp, and here is the landscape along the Sabi River with an elephant in the background. Spotted another African fishing eagle by the roadside. Now a more typical savanna environment along the Sabi River, the giraffe. Near the Lua Sabi Rest Camp, the, the large reservoir at Sunset Dam had several African open billed storks, as well as some water thickness. Here, here we show the Lua Sabi Rest Camp in relation to the Talamat Rest Camp. So, 110 kilometer drive. I saw this pair of the Cape Cross less otters on the Sabi River and saw them from the rest camp. This bird, this is a white browed robin shot, it was very calm in the camp itself. In the Sabi River saw this white crowned lapwing, a larger wading bird. Drive around towards the Duke waterhole and saw this lion with a big belly since they had already eaten a zebra lunch. We drove more, saw many birds, managed to photograph this red billed buffalo weaver. Eventually, our progress was stopped by, by this rhinoceros roadblock, this the, white lip, the square-lipped rhinoceros, sometimes called the white rhinoceros. We had to turn back at this point because the rhinoceros didn't want to budge from the road. We turned back and eventually we, we stopped by the Duke waterhole again and saw the previous lion now taking a big nap in the middle of a field. Not far we spotted this black backed jackal. We had an opportunity for a really nice photo of a lilac breasted roller. Close to the camp we stopped again at the sunset dam. So this white fronted plover. And then in the camp itself, we saw a black collared barbet. And here's a sunset photo marking the end of our last day in Kruger. We went, we drove to Nelspruit and then flew to Cape Town will tell you about our adventures around Cape Town later. Thank you.